In this video, I'm going to share some really awesome Excel tricks with one trick better than the other lined up. Let's start. Alright, the first one is dynamic range. Now, this is not the usual dynamic range that you might have seen earlier with index and offset and things like that. This is different and quite helpful in a lot of scenarios. Let me help you understand. So here in a spreadsheet, I've got uh, revenues. There are six lines or five lines of revenue across four different months. And here I want to take a total of all the revenue. Now, generally, the way that you would go about doing this is that you are going to select all of these cells right here. And then you would use the shortcut alt is equals to and that brings in the revenue, which is fine. But the only problem is that this particular range is hard coded. That means it starts with D3 and goes up till D7. Not a problem. But let's just say that for some instance, somebody just takes this line off from here and puts it down a few cells. And then if you add, let's say line number six right here, and then if you let's say add the value 10 across all the cells, the value doesn't update. Technically, it should, but it doesn't update. What can we do that the value updates automatically taking a look at all the previous cells? Let me show you. So what you're going to do is you're going to go over to the formulas tab and we're going to create a named range. And in the formulas tab, I'm going to go and take a look at the name manager. And in the name manager, I've got a few things here that doesn't concern us at the moment. I'm going to start to make a new name. In the new name, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and here in the formula bar, I'm going to go ahead and reference the previous cell from the current cell selected. It is not a mandate that you have to be selecting the cell on which you're currently working on. It could be any cell in the spreadsheet. But here, if this is the current cell selected, which is D11, you're going to select the previous cell, which is D10. Simple as that. Now, we're going to make some modifications to this particular formula. The modification are that we're going to get rid of the dollar sign to make it a relative reference. And we are also going to delete any sheet reference. That means I don't really want to call it from sheet number one. I want to call it from any sheet, right? Doesn't matter. So I'm just going to get rid of the one. So at the end of this thing, the only thing that we remain with is the exclamation sign and D10 to make it absolutely relative to any sheet that we might be working on. That's it. And I'm going to give this name as previous cell. Good to go. I'm going to click on OK. And this is the previous cell. Click on close. And we are good to go. Now, how does it affect our spreadsheet? Let me show it to you first. So I'm going to go here in a blank cell. And I'm going to say that this is nothing but my previous cell. Now, because the previous cell is empty, it's actually going to give you a zero. But if you had something in the previous cell, let's say for instance, my name, it's actually going to give you my name. This is not quite helpful, but it will just turn helpful in one second. So now we come back to our formula. And the formula, if you take a look, was starting at D3, which is this cell. Now, I don't really want the formula to end at D7. I instead wanted to end here. And what is this? This is, you guessed it, previous cell. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out D7 and instead write the previous cell. I'm going to close the bracket, press enter, and the formulas do update. But let's just put this through the test of time. I'm going to go ahead and cut this right here and put it down. And just for, you know, sake of adding a value, I'm just going to add in 100. Now you can see that all of the values get updated by 100. And that is the beauty of this. Now it starts at D3, but it ends at the previous cell, whatever cell that might be. Now, once you've learned how do you do this, you can do it to the left cell, top cell, any cell possible. And you can use this in your financial model, in your Excel models. This is going to be so slick and super helpful. Let's move on to my next trick. If you're enjoying this video so far, I'd like to give a big shout out about my courses on Power BI, especially tax, modeling, and the M language. I teach them in a very, very structured way. You'll not only learn how to obviously frame the solutions to the problems that I'm discussing in the course, but more importantly, I pay a lot of attention on explaining the logic as to why a thing is working and why is it not working and how do you actually debug your own problems. This is going to boost your confidence tremendously while you're trying to build your own solutions and you'll be able to confidently build your solutions. In the last few weeks, I have completely revamped my DAX course and started from scratch teaching you the fundamentals, adding in a lot of content depth to the course. The new one is out now. I'll leave a link for you to join the course and you'll find it tremendously beneficial. Let's just go back to the video. This trick is concerning charts. And once I saw this for the first time, my jaw dropped. I learned this trick from John Peltier's blog and this is super helpful. Let me show that to you real quick. So I've got some data here. These are months and year one data and year two data. Let's just say that we don't have year two data to begin with and we're just working with the months and the year one data. So what do I do with this? I just go ahead and select this data, use Alt F1 and you build a chart right here. This is my year one chart real quick. Now after a few months pass by, you actually get year two data and now people are asking you that, hey, why don't you add year two data in the same chart? Now what's the fast? 
fastest course of action that you will take to add that data to the chart. Most of the people are going to go something like this. They probably click on the chart, they'll click on the node right here, they'll extend the node to the second range, which is fine, it's not a problem. But the only trouble is that in case there were any data in between the first column and the second column, it's not going to work just right. Anyways, another way to do that is right click on the chart and then you click on select data and then you add the data. But one of the fastest way to add data to the chart is literally this. You have used it like a bazillion times. You just select the data, whatever that is, control C on the data, select the chart and control V on the chart. And that's literally it. Control C, control V and the data has been added. Now, the only thing that we are uh, remaining to add in the chart is the legend because we don't really know what is the orange bar and what's the blue bar. So I can just click on the plus sign and I can add in a little legend right here. And that is beautiful. Moving on to my next trick. Here is the trick. Let's just say that I'm working with this particular data, which has got some random headers, date, sales rep, customer, sales profit in the region. And somebody asks you, hey, why don't you apply the filter on James? Uh, what's your course of action? How are you going to apply the filter? Most people, they're going to select the headers. Now, either through the keyboard shortcut or through the mouse, they're going to activate filtering on this data. So I'm going to use the shortcut control shift L and you hit the filter and then you uncheck everybody or you type James and then you filter down to James. Now, imagine that I don't even have the filters. Like there are no filters. I just go pick up James and I apply the filter and it's done. Now, what did I do? I'm going to teach you that. Now, there is a very interesting trick, auto filter and a couple of babies of auto filter that I will discuss with you now. So how do you activate auto filter? What you do is that you go over to the quick access toolbar and then hit the drop down to customize this. So once you customize the quick access toolbar, you're going to go over to more commands. Now, more commands actually allows you to access the quick access toolbar and what is kept right here. Anything that you keep on the quick access toolbar, you can access that very, very quickly. We're going to keep something called as auto filter, which was there available back in the old days of Excel, but now it's behind the scenes in the settings. Okay, so let's just go activate that. So I'm going to go ahead and change the popular commands to commands not in the ribbon. That's one. And here I will go search for something called as auto filter. Auto filter, in short, it means filter by selection. I could select the cell and apply a filter. So auto filter is right here. Now I'm going to click on auto filter, then I'm going to click on add and the auto filter is added somewhere right here. Now you can decide wherever you want to add auto filter. My auto filter is currently added on the fourth position right here. And I am going to remember the position number. So auto filter is on number four and I will just remember four. Now you could be placing auto filter on the fifth position on the sixth position doesn't matter, but just remember the position number. All right, good to go. Click on okay. And you're out of this and we are now good to start. So now let's just say that I want to filter for Veronica. I go select Veronica and you guessed it because my auto filter was on the fourth position. I triggered the shortcut alt four, not alt F4. That's the shortcut to close Excel and go home alt four because my auto filter was in the fourth position and Veronica is filtered. This is beautiful. Now let me talk about a few babies of auto filter, which are super nice and super handy, like few ancillary tricks that come along with auto filter. All right, take a look at this particular column called the sales column. Now, obviously, it's very rare that you filter to a particular number. For instance, I don't really want to filter to 10,900 using alt four doesn't concern me. But I want to let's say filter down to everybody which is more than a 14,000. How do I filter that using auto filter, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the bottom of the data where the data ends in the adjacent empty cell. That's where you're going to write your filter condition, like literally type it down in a cell. So I will say greater than or equal to 14,000. That's my filter condition. Now you're going to go back to that cell and then trigger your auto filter shortcut alt four and you are kind of good to go. And this is all the data more than 14,500. This is amazing. Now this obviously produces these junk values, which you have to get rid of before you start working actually with the data. But these are nice hacks to play around and just to understand the data. One more trick before we leave. let's just say that in this particular column, which is the sales rep column, I want to filter out all the people who have, let's say five letters in their names. So how do I do that? Just write five question marks. One question mark means one letter that I do not know of. So a uh, one letter, two letter, three letter, four letter and five letters. That's it. Click on that. And then you go ahead and use the auto filter shortcut. And these are all the people, five letters in their names. And that is super awesome. A lot of times you're supposed to show text values in the value section of the pivot table. Now this is going to be bonkers. Please take a look. So here I have a simple data and this is the very data that we just worked with, with auto filter just a while ago, but that's all right. So now from this data, I have taken my customer and I put that in the rows and this is nothing but a pivot table. You understand that. And I have uh, the year kept it as a slicer up on the top. So I'm just taking a look at 2024 data right here. Now I want to take a look at which were the sales representatives that serviced every single customer. The names of those salespeople should appear in a single cell separated by a comma. So let's say salesperson A, salesperson B and salesperson C. These were the people who serviced Boston consultants and I just want them in a single cell. How do you do that? I want to have a text output concatenated when I put something in the value section of the pivot table. The only problem is that if I just 
go right here and if I take my sales rep and put that in the value section, I get account because that's a text. I cannot get the name of the salesperson and right? that's bad. So what do I do about that? I'm actually going to use something called as power pivot. Let me help you understand how that works. So for example, you'll have to load this particular pivot table data into power pivots data model and write one simplistic formula. So I'm going to go ahead and click on more tables to be able to do that. Now you're going to click on more tables in case you have already made a standard pivot table. And if you haven't made a standard pivot table, you can go the other way. But for now, since I have made a pivot table, I'm going to follow this route. So more tables and yes. And then this is actually going to create a power pivot built pivot table. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start to write a very simple formula. So how do I do that? I'm going to go ahead in the power pivot tab up on the top and I'm going to click on measures and then I want to write a new calculation. And then here is nothing but my, let's say sales rep name. And then I'm going to start to write a function. Now, what's my function? The very first thing that I want to do is first find the unique customer. So for which I'm going to write the values function and I'm going to go ahead in the range table and then go ahead and pick up the sales rep. Now the values function is going to make sure that every single sales rep is unique. Now, once I've got the unique sales rep, I want to concatenate them. So I can just write something like concatenate X. So I can say concatenate X. I'll say, hey, here is a table, which is where I have the unique salesman. And once you concatenate the name of the salesman, which is the sales rep column, please also separate them with a little comma. And that's pretty much it. That's that's literally it. This is the nothing but the unique salesman. Now the salesmen are concatenated. Once they are concatenated with a comma, the formula finishes. Check the formula. No, all good. No errors. Click on OK. And now this formula is dragged right here. Now you can see that every single customer is serviced by every single sales rep. So what's going on? Because there's no filter for the year. Let's just apply a different filter just to check. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a region filter perhaps. So I'm going to right click and add it as a slicer and a slicer has been added. Now, if I take a look at East, you can see that now the salesmen are showing up just all right. That is how you add text values in the values section of the pivot table. The next trick is when you load data to Power Query, there is no need to load it back into Excel. You can do without that as well. Let me show that to you. So here is some data, just the same data that we worked with a while ago. And in this data, what I want to do is I want to take this data to Power Query, do some transformation, but not load it back, but still be able to use it. So I'm going to click on this particular data. Now this data could be coming off from the current Excel file, from a different Excel file, combined from multiple Excel files, doesn't matter. So I'm going to click on the data and I'll go over to the data tab and then I'll click on from table range. And this puts the data inside of Power Query. Once the data has been loaded in Power Query, I can just do some random transformations. For example, I don't really want to have the sales rep. I don't really want to have the profit. I can just do in a few transformations. We are kind of good to go. Now, instead of actually loading this data into Excel, which I can get that through close and load, I'm actually going to use the option close and load too, which allows me to directly make a pivot table report on a new worksheet without even making my spreadsheet heavier. Now, all of that data is stored in the pivot table cache and you can use it to build any kind of reports that you would want to build. And that is pretty awesome. Now, if, now, if you have a large data being processed by Power Query and you still want to remain in the house of Excel, not load it, but use it. This is one of the brilliant ways to go about it. In case you want to take a look at some really awesome Power Query tricks, I have another video for you and I highly recommend that you watch that video as well. Cheers. Oh, 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 oh,